Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, today's section um, of portfolio is all about giving Edie little samples of uh, stitching, so hand sewing. So what I thought is the first two pockets, I've just put in a little piece of calico that needs a little iron, which I will do. Um, and maybe using a water soluble, a heat soluble pen, we draw something on there for her to stitch. That's sort of my idea for the front. Inside, I've got two larger pieces of calico that can be used to create a slow stitch piece. Like we're talking, this is a little bit advanced. Having said that, I'm going to pre do one with just tacking stitches, collaging bits and pieces down. And then if she can do this and enjoys it, she's got two more pieces of fabric ready to go. So, you know, maybe another activity that if I'm on holidays up there, I can sort of get her started on it. Or once grandma sees this, because grandma's a sewer, she can get her started on it. So I think that's what will be in the center. And then on the back will just be another piece of fabric that can have something maybe sketched on it to um, have her embroider. So that's the plan. Let's start with these little ones here in the front. Um, now what I wanna do is draw on here maybe some stitches that she could do to get us started. So, um, maybe a running stitch. What am I trying to do here? Yeah, maybe I'll just do a line. Oh, Casper. Casper really wants to come up and he's just clawing me at me. Um, maybe maybe we do a little running stitch now this will just get her used to you know sewing needle and thread another straight stitch maybe maybe we do a bit of a close together running stitch next i'm using my ruler as a guide or I know we'll do different size stitches. So the first one can be an eighth of an inch spacing. And then we'll do a slightly bigger stitch. We might do half an inch with an eighth of an inch between. Concentrate on what I'm doing here. We'll have to include some cottons just to get us started. And then we might do some really big stitches, maybe, maybe a full centimeter. There's some nice big ones. Okay, so that shows her stitch length and sizing. Let's do some X's and maybe we do them quite random. We won't go into French knots and all of that because I think that's probably a little bit advanced. I guess if grandma is confident that she can handle it, grandma can show her how to do some knots. We'll do some little X's. That's enough, I think. 
So there's our little sampler. All right, so that'll sit into there. Now, this one, what could we do on here? Maybe, maybe she could stitch her name. This will be a challenge. There we go. Edie. And we might add some little, I don't know, what could we add there? Maybe a little bit of lace. We layer some lace in there. We'll come back to that. I think we can do... Maybe we do a heart here. I sort of feel like it needs something on that edge. There we go. Who knows what that will turn into, but that's a start. Now, inside is slow stitch, so that's all right. So we've got a bigger piece here. Do we, do we get a bit crazy and give her something that she can embroider that's a bit more substantial i wonder if there's something in that coloring in book just give me a second i'm going to grab that coloring in book or do we do we look at a stencil i'll grab the coloring in book first one few second okay this might be might be a little bit too hard. Let's have a little look through. There might be something that catches our eye that we could use as a base. That's got potential. That flower there with that section there has potential. Yeah, I like that. See if I can see. This is getting advanced, but I hope it's not too much. But I guess if she if she masters those running stitches, she's away. She's pretty much can just running stitch in this design. We'll see, won't we? And I guess if this is going to be a little bit too much, I can grab the iron and just iron it away and we do something, maybe we do more running stitch and getting used to doing those sorts of lines. The other thing we could do is we could introduce the sewing machine to her and get her on a sewing machine just doing lines of straight stitching you know remember when we used to stitch on a piece of paper rows and rows of stitching so that's another activity that grandma could bring into Edie's world is some work on a sewing machine Okay, this is getting a bit tricky, mind you, but you never know. Like Edie's 10, I, I'm not going to underestimate what a 10-year-old can achieve these days. Probably thinking back on it, I would have been doing this. I'm sure I was doing Lazy Daisy Stitch and things like that at 10. So there's a flower, start of a flower. Is there something we could put on the bottom of that? To finish it. Um, maybe we just finish with a line again coming down and then do 
another daisy here just to make this like a little border I'll have to update you on how all this goes and if this was a might do a few little dashes out there there we go just simple that's not too bad I don't think oops maybe I do a border around it that she can stitch that always finishes things off nicely if we do a little little embroidery so we'll slide that into the back I might have to go and have a look at my cottons and maybe we make a pocket let's have a little play hang on there guys back in a second I'm just going to have a think about how we put some cottons in this project. So what if I find one that's quite thin? Because you won't need a lot of... Well, we've got to keep it bright, don't we? There's a red. So let's say we get a, a little, you know, thingamajiggy. And we put in front of the project a little pocket that has some thread on it. So we need to find a little strip like so. And if we gave it a gusset I'm just mucking around here at the moment I haven't 100% decided on this but if we gave it a little bit of a gusset so that it could hold a bit of but we'll keep it quite firm at the bottom because I don't want them to fall out the little threads So if that was glued down at the base tight, but had the gusset up the side, and we keep it really tight, we could put some little cottons. Do I have any more of those little thingamajiggers? I would elsewhere. They're slightly different, but we get the general picture. We could put some little portions of cotton in here now it's not going to be probably enough to complete a project but at least it's a start of something and i'd be pretty confident i could wind some colors off of my you know threads to oh, the mailman the dogs up the road have told the dogs next door that there's the mailman coming therefore they've told their neighbors who've then told my pair of my pair of idiots just going to pinch a little bit more of that oh i like that bright one all right all right all right you pair I sort of feel like i need something a bit brighter does it matter probably not yellow a sort of those uh, colors seem too adult sorry guys I I think I know where there's some orange scrapbook paper or at least a brighter color maybe I don't know where there's some
No, I don't. Okay. Anyway, the plan is to find some paper that can go there. That might even do it. Let's just have a little chop and have a look. So we don't want the pocket too big because they will fall out. So it's one and a half plus an eighth. All right, two little itty bitty pockets. Let's give it a bit of a edge to turn. Make it. And the other one. So these little pockets will hold embroidery flosses or a little bit of embroidery floss to get it going. Now the other thing we need to add somewhere in this project is a needle that she can use. So I have to have a think about how, how we can do that. Now I'm gonna run these under the sewing machine because that stitching, if I say just put a line of stitching on top or bottom, doesn't really matter. That just gives that little bit of friction in there for cottons to hang on to. So I'm going to do that. Let's assume that that's done and they're glued into position. Then I will find some little embroidery flosses to go in there. And you know what I might do as well is actually put glue down the center. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna make four pockets. That guy into there, that into there. Glue down the centre so then they're, they're not flipping around. It'll be a little bit more snug. And I'll be able to put four colours together so that um, she can do her little sampler. <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and her name. So that's what's going to be on the front. So I'll just put them out of the way for now. Those pockets will be stitched and put into position. Okay, that's the next project. But let's get back to this guy. Now, let's once again create a pocket here. I think this will do the trick. Just need to trim that down so it fits. And that can go there and we should be able to get two cottons into there. Might even be able to sneak a third and that would hold it all into position. Three little cottons. There we go. I think that'll be quite firm and hold okay. And that'll give us three colours for that project. Okay, so that, once again, is a bit of homework. Now, how do we bring a needle into this? I'm thinking, because there's going to be um, elastic through here from the journal, so that will hold this project in, in position. And this is just to store some other elements. So we might tuck a doily in there, who knows? These paper clips are sort of holding everything a little bit. So I'm wondering if we could do something to hold a needle. Um, we need some we need some felt. I'm sure I'd have some scrap felt. Yep, I do. So I'm wondering if I do. Let's do some fabric scissors. Oops, sorry about the noise, guys, as I clink. Let's see if we can make a needle holder. 
of some description. So I've got a piece of felt. It's not square, but it's not bad. And it sits, you know, up in there. So it's somewhere to put her needle at the end of the project. So let's... What are we doing? I think we need some backing fabric. So I'm going to just snip that and tear it. I don't know where I'm heading with this, but anyway, I'm going to give it a little overhang to make it look cute, like so. So let's just tear that. Flip that over. Okay, let me grab my needle book of mine and see if we can grab a needle and just stitch. Stitch that down. There we go. Oh, look at that, how bent it is. <sighs> Don't look at what I do, Edie. <clears throat> and I wonder if I can put a little bit of lace across the top of that just to decorate it. Just a little bit of trim there. Yep, I like that. And then maybe grab some pink. An old cotton. Can't use that because the eye is too small, but this would do. And I'm going to just put some little running stitches across the top of it to secure it. Okay. But before, before I do, I've just got to do a text to the store manager. Sorry, guys. Um, this is important. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. Books. Uh, Okay, sorry about that. And there's a tradesman has turned up at one of the stores to do some work for us. We've got a air conditioning unit that is not working. So we want to get it fixed before the heat, heat arrives of summer. And um, maybe I'll do a, a little yeah a rusticky little overcast stitch because that's a stitch that is easy you could do blanket stitch but um i want to keep it real primitive stitching simple for her and overcast stitches are is a good one why is that little thread there so we'll do a little pink overcast stitch around the edge of this felt. So this is going to hold our needle and maybe a few pins. And I think that paper clip up at the top there will have enough strength to hold it. Worst case scenario, we could probably put a little bull clip.
Okay. Oh, the thread. What am I doing? Goodness me. I didn't give myself enough thread to finish the task. I'm actually going to undo this, guys. I'm not happy with that because I'd have to knot it. And re um, start, and it's a bit tricky to hide a an ugly knot when <clears throat> when um, this flap can be flipped up and down. So I'm going to see my original plan was to use this cotton to stitch the very top which was the perfect length but then in the second a thought come into my head I headed off in a different direction and now I don't have enough thread to do what I want to do where I did have enough thread to do what I originally want to do does that make sense so I'm going to cut a nice generous piece and I'm going to do it properly. Then we're going to overcast stitch around that edge like we planned to in the first place. It was the text from my store manager that threw me. Okay, let's go. We're off and running again. We'll just follow those same holes that we had. Not too tight. So it doesn't pucker in. So my plan is for this piece here is to create a collage of fabrics and embroideries. And tack it down and just have her do the running stitch around each of the pieces is the plan. So keep it simple. And these are all things that her and her grandmother could potentially find in the linen cupboard like old doilies or they go op shopping and find a nice doily. So I've got my box here of just pieces that I've cut out of doilies. So I'm going to have a little rummage through there and see what we can find to sort of put together a bit of a collage. Then we have one, one page left, one insert left so I'm thinking I don't I'm not 100% sure yet is we do something with paper collaging glue glue and paper but I'm not sure yet I'll um, get this section done I think this will be two episodes alone just to get ourselves squared away with this little section and then we've just got to come up with one more project corner and then we'll have a look at it all in its entirety and then we've got to make a decision what we do with this little purple journal do we somehow include it or not it will all come down to how bulky We've created what we have created already. Oops. Uh, don't. Don't get complicated. I've got myself all knotted up. So we're coming down the home straight now. With a little 
whip stitch, overcast stitch. I love how every culture has a different name for very similar stitches, if not the same. So poor Edie, as she starts to learn all these things, we all go through the, isn't that just overcast stitch? No, the Japanese call it this, the Native Americans call it this, the Europeans call it this. It's quite interesting, really, the history of stitch. I guess there's only so many stitches and then variations of them stitches. So that's better. One piece of one piece of cotton got me all the way around to put a little detail on that piece of felt, and that can go there. That can come down just to give it a little something. So let's get that original cotton now on our needle. Goodness me. Feels like it's snapped. Yeah, look at that. I knew it was an old one when I picked it up. It's probably come from a kit. And I just felt like the fibres had broken down. Yeah, see that? All right, new piece. The, the number on it too was a dead giveaway that it might be something not from my usual range. Okay. Now we're back. And let's just give that a little stitch there. A really quick and easy little needle holder is what we want. Just with a running stitch, I think, is all I need at the top there. Okay. How cute. We haven't even started trimming the pages. Like, oh, I can't wait to start embellishing because it's very basic at the moment. And I sort of want to put random bits and pieces through it, textiles that she can touch and little stitcheries and, you know, have a play, I guess, have a play myself. Let's, let's admit it. Okay. Coming along that top edge. That's cute. Maybe we do pinks and things on the embroidery. Okay, done. So now I can knot that off and that will hold all of that together. And we've just made ourselves somewhere, hopefully, to put a needle. Put that away. Let's get that out of here, get these scraps out of here. And then we can just slide that up, up there. Perfect. And, oops, sorry, bumped the camera. I need to find a good needle for her that she can easily thread with some pins, with some pretty little pins. Couple pins. Maybe one more. Now, a needle that's got a decent eye. Here's a good one. I hope that's a good one. It's a darning needle, so we've got a bit of length. It's sharp-ish. I might just see if I can thread it easily. I don't want her to be struggling. I might need something 
Yeah, I need a bigger eye. Let's not make it hard for the girl. Would be okay if you only used a couple threads. Maybe I've got to give her that big one there. That's a wool needle. I need to restock needles. What's in here? Might be some treasures in that section. Nope. Pins. Nope. Let's close that back up. Where's the one I just used? I'm going to put it in there, I think. Mm. It's so little, but, but it's a good start. I'll put it there. And that then can remind me to get her similar eye, but I want it longer. I want a longer shaft. So that's the plan anyway. Okay, so we've got some needles. We will have some pockets for the threads by the time I finish. Some little samplers there. Might just draw a frame around that. stop fraying if she can in stitch along those edges that'll keep this piece from unraveling okay so there's her name plate that she can have a little stitch with I've got a sample those pockets need to be attached and filled with a couple cottons we've got couple pieces spare and then we've got our piece that we're going to create in here to sort of get us started and then on the back we've got another piece that she can embroider and a pocket that will come to be here with some cottons in it so I think that's a good start all right now I'm going to put that aside create some space and we might just start having a little look at this panel. I don't want to do too much yet, I don't think. But we'll see what we've got in our box of tricks. And maybe just pull a few pieces out. Because I'm going to have to go shortly. There's a little butterfly. Let's just have a little rummage through. It's got potential. Let's see what else we got. Oh, I don't mind doing something with a gorgeous bunch of gorgeous flowers like that. Keep looking, keep rummaging. Little cross stitches. Maybe we work with some of these again. Remember I said grandma found this at the op shop and grabbed this big tablecloth Maybe we do something with that. <clears throat> I'm going to pull it out because I'm thinking along the lines of that, to be honest. What else is in here? Nothing else jumping out at me. See, there's some flowers cut out. There's a little element. Hmm. 
Okay. All right, guys. What I'm going to do is just put all of this back in before it gets in a real mess. And I think I'm either going to do something with that piece that Grandma found or I go off on my own tangent with another sort of... See, that's good too. I like that as well. Let's pull that out as well. <clears throat> Put all that back. That's some more of those little guys. Okay. Let's close that up and have another closer look. So, option one, we have Grandma's Embroidery elements and we got a lot of them so we could really do something with that and get her to stitch around then I've got a couple little pieces there like they're sweet there's lots of this grandma stuff <clears throat> don't need that and I really like that. No. I'm going to go with the grandma piece. Because I think grandma, she was, <clears throat> when she handed it to me, she was really impressed with the work that was in it, that someone had created this embroidery. And... Um, she said, I don't know what she could use it for, but it's just so pretty. I just had to get it and I thought of you. And I'm like, great, beautiful elements that I can use. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, guys. So it really sort of caught her attention. So that piece is the same. So I'm just going to sort through it and see what we've got. So that's a repetitive piece. All right, well, we don't need all of that out. So we can pop that back in the box let's have a look at these flowers because what we could have Edie do is not only does it show her basic primitive embroidery is we could have her um, maybe duplicate it at a later date like this is a mood board so I'm just going to sort them through and see what colour combos we have. Okay, I can see a bit of a pattern happening here. Okay. All right. Now, which one did we put on the cover? I'm just looking up at my table. That is on the cover. Okay, so maybe let's... Let's take one each of them, but we have used him already. So let's put them away. And we got our big one. So I'm thinking along the lines of we deconstruct something here <clears throat> and have Edie stitch it all down and then maybe we bring in some doilies and some other fabrics. So that's where we're heading. I'm going to have to go. This is just a, a taste of what we will do in the next video because um, I've got to go to work, unfortunately. What a shame. What a shame. I'm going to have to go and um, do something constructive in my day. So I'm just going to do a little quick tidy up. I'm going to leave that there to remind me. I can put my pins and needles away. And we've got our cottons nearby. So the plan will be to create a collage with whatever elements I've got around. And then Edie can running stitch them down like the cover, like patchwork them down. So that's the plan. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you for now. Sorry, it's a little bit short of a video, but I will be back in the next one. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.